Rotations are fascinating for a number of reasons, but in this video I want to focus on topology. Let's start with two dimensions. We can pair up rotations of the plane with points on the circle in a way that preserves the topological structure. Therefore, the points on a circle and rotations in two dimensions are connected in the same way. That is, they have the same topology. Now let's talk about three dimensions. It's tempting to guess that we'll find something like a sphere or a ball, but we actually come up with real projective three space. To see why, consider the axis angle representation of rotations, which you'll be familiar with if you've ever worked with torque and angular momentum in classical physics. We can use this representation to associate each rotation with a point in the ball of radius pi centered at the origin. The last remaining thing to tackle is uniqueness. Because points on opposite sides of the surface are rotations of pi and negative pi around the same axis, they actually represent the same rotation, and so we need to treat them as the same point on our ball. And that's all there is to it. The space of 3D rotations has the same topology as a ball where the boundary wraps around to the other side, which you might know is real projective 3 space. You might also know that the fundamental group of real projective 3 space is Z2, which has an interesting consequence for rotations. Let's consider loops at the origin, which correspond to continuous sequences of rotations that start and end at the identity. A single rotation by 2 pi cannot be smoothly contracted to a point, but a rotation by 4 pi can. One way to understand this intuitively is to observe that a rotation by 2 pi around some axis can be smoothly deformed to a rotation by 2 pi around any other axis. Since a rotation by 4 pi is just two of these, we can take the second one and flip it around to rotate back in the opposite direction, which allows them to cancel out. This might all just seem like an arbitrary interesting math fact, and that's good enough if you ask me, but I found out about this when reading about quantum spin and spinners. Spinners are a critical part of the spin statistics theorem which tells us why fermions are subject to the Pauli exclusion principle and bosons are not, justifying the physics underlying chemistry and indeed our entire universe. But that's a topic for another video.